So this is a practical uh, determination of a solute potential by measuring the degree of incipient plasmolysis. So one of the tougher things to really think about uh, we find for students. And it'd be useful to start off with what do we mean by a few terms. So if we've got cells, so let's draw a plant cell, an onion cell, and let's have cell wall and then inside that we're going to have a cell membrane. I'll do that in red. So in this instance the cell membrane is right up against the cell wall and inside there that's our cytoplasm and we might have a, a nucleus or something inside there. Okay, and if we put that into some water, so water, the water potential, if it's pure water, water potential equals zero, and uh, a cell, any cell, will have some stuff dissolved in it. I'll have some salts and sugars or pro some proteins or things dissolved in there. So the water potential will be less inside the cell. So that'd be minus something. And these will be uh, kilopascals. And water will move by osmosis from a region of higher water potential to lower water potential. So from zero to the minus number. So water will move in by osmosis. And then that cell, in this condition, will be turgid. There will be an expansion of the cytoplasm in volume. So more volume, because there's more water. And that membrane will press up against the wall. And that pressing up against the wall is called pressure potential. So there is the solute potential inside, solute potential and uh, pressure potential there. And you've got a little equation where the, the overall kind of potential of the cell is the solute potential plus the pressure potential. Um, there might be another situation where we've got a similar sort of cell rubbish drawing of a cell wall but we might put that into a strong salt solution or sugar solution so water potential of the solution is you know, minus lots so let's call that you know, minus 500 maybe uh, the solute potential of the cell the cell might be say let's call it minus 300 and in that case osmosis goes from region of higher to lower water potential so osmosis will happen the other way so water will leave the cell and when that happens the volume of the cytoplasm decreases and so the cytoplasm is less in volume and pulls away the membrane away from the cell wall. So the cell will look like that. We can't really say the cytoplasm has shrinked or the membrane has shrinked. We need to say the, the membrane has pulled away from the moved away from the wall and the volume of the cytoplasm is less. This is called plasmolysis or plasmalized cell plasmalized there is a situation in between here where this is just about to start pulling away from this so you can imagine this water potential goes down and down and down and down 
until it's equal to the solute potential and then this is just about to move away so our pressure potential is zero. At that point we call that incipient plasmolysis. The problem with this is that all of these cells have got different solute potentials so some will start to pull away before others so when, when do you actually measure it? And our definition that we're going to use is when 50% of the cells look plasmalized. So if 50% are plasmalized in any sample, any tissue that we look at, that is going to be equal to our incipient plasmolysis. So we set up this experiment and we look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six pots. We actually use petri dishes and these are independent variable is the sucrose solution and it's the concentration of it. Concentration. So concentration of sucrose solution and we start off with distilled water, so 0, 0.0 molar, and then we have 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0. Mm. These are our concentrations of sucrose solution. And then we're going to look down the microscope and see what the cells look like. Do they look, count how many look like this, turgid, and how many look like that, plasmalized? And then we're going to process the results. And so what we do next is, if I get rid of that and show you our first view down the microscope. This is our distilled water, not point, not point not molar sucrose, so not point not molar sucrose. And we look down there and you know, to me, they all look turgid. I can't find any that show any plasmolysis at all. So we count those, or a section of those. I think for the results that we used, I counted a quarter of the view, which is roughly about 30 cells. And we decided that all 30 were turgid. So our percentage plasmalized is 0%. And then we go through the different, yeah, this is 0.2 molar sucrose and when I looked at a quarter of this again there's about 30 cells, I think there's 29 cells and I decided that you know, I could only really find one that was plasmalized and I can't remember, there's this quarter here and I see one, one showed some plasmolysis and again through the through the concentrations, these are actual results produced by our students you know, using a phone down the, down the microscope, always a good idea. So 0.4, uh, I decided that we could see a couple of a couple of cells in the quarter that started to show some plasmolysis. So for example this cell here, I think, I think it was this left quarter, that we starting to show some plasmolysis. There we are as well. So a couple of those cells. So is it two out of 29 are counted. Then as we got to 0 0.6, counted 30 cells and 25 of them were showing some signs of plasmolysis. 0 0.8 molar. Again, I counted 29 cells and 28 of them were showing plasmolysis and finally at one molar um, all of those cells that I counted in the quarter you know 100% of them were plasmalized. So we'd make those into a table so we'd make those into a table and that is the table that we would we would come up with we can see our independent variable concentration of sucrose from 0 to 1 and the percentage of cells plasmalized. So just rounded it to the nearest percent. I then plot a graph and you've got some graph paper in your lab book to do this. A graph of the independent variable versus the dependent and that is the graph that we we come up with. 
But that's not the end of the process. We need to remember our definition. Our definition was 50% plasmolysis. And that's going to be our incipient plasmolysis, our solute potential. So we need to, on this graph, draw a line across from 50%. So a line across from 50% and down, down here. Handily for us, that's going to be 0 0.5 uh, molar sucrose. So that is the concentration where we've got incipient plasmolysis. But actually, in our lab book, we've got a table. If we look further back, a table showing uh, solute potentials at different molarities. And so for our 0.5 molar, 0.5 molar, our solute potential is minus 1,450. So minus 1,450. So that equals minus 1,450, and the units will be kilopascal. It should be small k okay, there. Uh, kilopascal, thousands of pascals. So that is our solute potential.